What's up Affordable Armory folks, how y'all doing? Today we got the follow up and full review of the Taurus GX4. If this is your first time here, click the subscribe button down below so you'll find out when future videos come out. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Okay, so I've got the Taurus GX4. Before I get too deep into this video, leave a comment down below. Do you have the Taurus GX4? Are you planning to get one? And what do you think of guns like this and the Sig Sauer P365, the Springfield Hellcat, and stuff like that? Are they a viable carry option, or are they a good backup gun, or do you just steer clear of them altogether? Let me know, leave a comment down below. Okay, so first on the rundown is price and affordability. This thing is supposed to go for about $399. I've seen it going for a little more than that. Market prices right now are a little crazy, so some guns are going for more than what we'd really like to pay for them, or more than what you should pay for them. I've seen it for the low 400s, 429-ish. Um, hopefully you can find it for a good deal, like 369 would be a great price for a gun like this. Um, because for a little bit more, you can get something like the SIG 365 or Springfield Hellcat or an M&P Shield Plus. So. Um, as far as affordability, if you can find it for the right price and get a deal on it, it's a great gun. Next up is capacity. So I've got two magazines here. One is the 11 round magazine. This one I ordered from Taurus. It is the 13 round magazine. That's pretty standard stuff. Most of these size guns, it's 10, 11, 12, 13-ish rounds. That's pretty much what you're gonna get. It's really nice that you can fit this many rounds in such a small gun. An interesting note, these are actually the same magazine body. When I ordered these from Taurus, these are the 13 round magazines, I ordered a couple of them. Uh, I saw that they had these pinky extensions here, so this is no longer flush and uh, I like that. I'll talk about that here in a bit when I talk about accuracy. Um, but they also sell plus two base plates, which literally turns it into this. So as far as capacity, 11 rounds, 13 rounds. Now let's talk about accuracy. If you saw my first video, the unboxing and first shots, you might remember that I was not too pleased with the accuracy of this gun. Um, could not get it to shoot center mass for the life of me. It was shooting about six inches to the left it was way off and so i thought about it i did a whole lot of dry fire practice with it now this gun comes with two back straps and so one of the things i did is i put the large back strap on here um, that really helps it to better sit in the palm of my hand the other thing i did as i mentioned in capacity is i've got these little pinky extensions so the 11 round magazine now has just a little bit more room right there again helping me get a nice full grip on the gun. And you take your 13 round magazine and I've even got just a little bit left over. So the pinky extension combined with the larger palm swell has definitely helped out as far as the accuracy of this gun. I'll roll in some of the shooting footage so you can see uh, how much it's changed since the last time I shot it. It's still not perfect, uh, which I guess no gun is really gonna be perfect, but it's much better than it was the first time around. Okay guys, we've got the GX4 back here at the range and I'm gonna do some shooting with it. Uh, the GoPro is dead so you won't be able to see the targets, but I'll tell you I'm shooting at three inch dots at seven yards. So here we go. Starting off with the flush fit mag with the little pinky extension on it. Definitely pulling those shots to the left. This is the 13 round magazine. I've only put 10 rounds in it, but it's basically the same magazine and they've added a plus two base plate to it. Okay, I'm going to finish up this box of ammo. There was only a couple more rounds left, uh, five more rounds, and then I'm going to shoot some hollow points through it. Here we go. Well, it must be warmed up because those were all on target. Okay, I've got a mag loaded up with hollow points, and we're going to try it out. 
make sure that they can run in this guy. Okay, so you see the number one target there. Uh, just like I said, everything was missing to the left. Number two target um, was a little bit high and then some to the left. And then like I said on number three, those five rounds, pretty much all in the three. Got one that's just outside, but the rest of them are all in the three. Um, and then the number four target, um, those were the hollow point rounds. And again, I missed high and to the left. So. Uh, it's pretty consistent where I'm missing with this gun. I don't know. Uh, this is inconclusive. I think it still needs some more work. One more change that I made is I changed out the sights and I'll throw in some close-ups so you can see. Uh, but this gun is able to take Glock sights, uh, which I think is pretty cool. It makes it very easy to swap out the sights. I will say that the front sight would not come off I could not get the screw to come out. I'm pretty sure I stripped it, so I ended up just drilling it out. And then when I replaced it, the screw that came with the aftermarket sight that I put on there uh, worked just fine. It was super easy to install. So very happy to report that the, the rear sight is a Glock 17 sight, and then the front sight I actually ordered from Taurus, and it is an Ameriglow orange tritium front sight. I really like the high-vis orange front sight and I definitely think it aided in the improvement of the accuracy especially when combined with the gun now fits better in my hand with the pinky extension and the larger palm swell. Okay so reliability. Um, you know I haven't put a bajillion rounds through this thing. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. I have taken this thing to the range three maybe four times since that initial video and so I, I mean it's probably got close to 500 rounds through it maybe and i'm happy to report that it has no issues with malfunctions i'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's 100 percent reliable because i just haven't shot it enough or done enough testing with it to say that but so far so good now as to ergonomics and feel um again a lot of this has to do with the changes that i made to it putting that larger back strap on there makes it sit nicely in the palm of my hand um, I like this little curve here. It sits nicely in the web of your hand and then this little curve here fills the palm. Very, very nice. I like it a lot. The slide serrations, they're very easy to grab a hold of. Could be a little bit more aggressive, maybe a little deeper cut or something, but I haven't had any issues with it. Just kind of a personal preference thing. They do have the front slide serrations there. That's kind of nice. Uh, I love the grip texturing there. Uh, the texturing on the grip itself is nice. It could be a little bit more aggressive, but it's not terrible. And then the mag release is very easy to get to. It's raised so you can push it with ease. I've had no issues with that, which is good. And then you have the flat-ish trigger, which brings me to my next topic, which is the trigger. This gun has a flat trigger. And I put that in quotes because if you look at it real close there, you can see it's flat, but then it curves back this way at the top. So I wouldn't call this a true flat trigger by any means. So you have a really wide trigger blade on there, which I like a lot. Uh, one of my favorite guns is my Shadow Systems MR920, the War Poet, which I've done a video on. It has a wide trigger blade safety as well, and I really like that because it makes it very easy to press the trigger. Um, you just definitely feel it. So when I put my finger on there, I definitely feel that engage and I like that a lot. Uh, some of those little slim ones, it kind of digs into your finger. It's a little uncomfortable. This is much nicer. And it's also got serrations on there to aid in feeling it. Uh, now, as far as the trigger press itself, I'll go ahead and show you the gun is clear. And I'm going to press. There is your take up right there. Just that little bit. And then bang. It I'll let it reset, hear it click, it's good, it's got an audible click for people who like that, and then press, there you go. So I would say it's a pretty decent trigger. It's, it's definitely the best trigger that Taurus has put out so far, which is a good sign. I hope they put out a full size version of this because that would be really cool. Now, purpose of this gun. Well. I think it's pretty straightforward. This is a concealed carry or even a deep concealed carry gun. 
Um, this is maybe a pocket carry pistol or an ankle carry pistol, or if you're wearing light clothing, maybe you carry it as a primary. Um, I typically don't like to carry small guns like this as a primary, but I would definitely carry it as a backup. Uh, I would ankle carry it or maybe even pocket carry. It's it's cold out, so I might throw it in a holster or in a jacket or something. But it's definitely not a range gun. It's not a gun that I'm going to take and shoot all the time. I just don't see that being a whole lot of fun. And for home defense, I definitely want something bigger. So there's your purpose right there is uh, deep concealment or backup gun or primary gun if you're in lighter clothing. So overall rating, um, what do I think of this gun in total? I think Taurus has a winner here. Uh, I hope they start making other 9mm like this. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love the G2C and the G3C. Those are fantastic pistols you guys have seen on the channel. But this gun, I mean, make a Glock 19 sized version of this gun and I think you're going to have a lot of happy campers. So there you go, there's my full review of the Taurus GX4. I think it's a fantastic pistol. If you're looking for a gun that is fairly cheap, um, and would make a great backup gun or even a primary carry gun from time to time, Taurus GX4 is a solid choice. As always, head over to affordable-armory.com. That's where the blog lives. That's where our social media links are. That's where our affiliate links are so you can save yourself some money on something you were going to buy anyway. And we've got merch there like hats, t-shirts, and mugs and stuff like that. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.